This is a download from Rutland Radio. Hello and thank you for downloading the Rutland Radio podcast from rutlandradio.co.uk. This is where you can hear the best bits from the last week. The cake topper, which will be displayed on top of a cake dummy. It's very beautiful. It involves a unicorn and a rainbow and all sorts of wonderful things. It will be displayed in Fords of Oakham. However, the tickets will be, we're hoping, will be made available via every individual school. We're hoping that each school can be responsible for distributing each of the tickets, which will obviously is a voluntary thing for parents, but it is a pound for each ticket with a minimum donation of a pound. You can do however much you want and you can do it anonymously. It's something I've made myself, handmade, the blue unicorn that I've used was made several months ago before Sunny died and it was uh, made as a trial run but it was obviously meant to be because it's been sitting on my shelf waiting for me to use it for something. See I don't make cakes for money, I can't make cakes for money, I only do it for love. So this doesn't include a cake unfortunately because whilst I know I will feel the love in the future to be able to make a cake, I can't at this moment in time. So it's a dummy cake you'll see with this lovely unicorn. Highlights from the past seven days, the Rutland Radio podcast. I'm here with the Lord Lieutenant of Rutland, Dr Sarah Furness, um, who led the proceedings um, here today, along with the the chairman of Rutland County Council. You must really be, I wouldn't say amazed, but certainly um, thankful for the amount of people who supported today, which seemed to be a huge increase on previous years. It has been, and I'm, I am so pleased, and I think it's so important that young people and everybody from across the county realises just how important the military is, both to us as a nation, but also in county. You know, if you think that we have 1,500 serving military personnel, and then there's their families, and then there we have over 9,000 veterans, all in our small, small county, they make an enormous contribution enormous difference and so it's very important we celebrate their presence and as well as that the schools which are here today again more schools than ever and um, it's 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 unusual to to find so many different schools with a military presence but that's what we have in our small county well i think i think that's true and i think i think schools are proud too of belonging belonging um to a county that has these military connections but i also think that i I said to um to, to people last year that it's such a lovely event this it's very picturesque and it's wonderful and it's a good thing to do and it was a shame that it hadn't been better attended so we made a great effort and I have to pay tribute to the Rutland County Council comms team um, who sent out and put things in the, on the radio and in the paper and, um, and wrote to schools and so we've had this much better attendance and I hope that this will continue in the future Rutland Radio Lieutenant Colonel Jim Edwards I'm the commanding officer of 7th Regiment Royal Logistic Corps uh, based in Kendry Barracks and um, not only um, seeing your support here today, but the public support um, that must be the biggest um, support of, of Oakham Armed Forces Day we, we've seen to date. Uh, well, personally, this is my first year, but having just spoken with the Lord Lieutenant, she said that it's at least twice of previous years. So, yeah, an amazing attendance. And it's so good to see so many schools as well. Uh, and what does it mean to you, actually, as you say, to see support from all ages? For us to be able to continue to do our duty with the support of the population, it's vital that we can be living, working amongst the population. And it's a real honour to see them recognising us as serving and also the veterans as well. Could you tell us briefly whereabouts the, the, the regiment are at the moment, whether you're out on operation or, or back here? in Rutland? So the regiment currently are split across a number of operational areas and also training. So we've got some training going on this week in the United Kingdom. We've also got people deployed to Eastern Europe. We've got people in Africa. We've got people in the Middle East. And also we've got a troop preparing to do public duties up in Edinburgh over this summer. So a real mix spread across the world. And obviously a lot of people also making their home here in Rutland, some of them actually settling in in the fairly early stages of that. Yes, very much so. We're seeing increasingly the amount of soldiers that desire to get posted to our regiment in particular because they're seeking to ultimately settle down in Rutland which I guess feeds back into the veterans and ultimately days such as this. So it's vital for us to establish those links with the local community. And am I right in thinking that Kendrew as well is also going to be an even more important part of the army in the East Midlands in the near future? I think it already has become that. You see the headquarters 7th Infantry Brigade has moved in but that's quite a statement in itself. With the closure of St George's Barracks we'll see the military working dogs move. So yes I think Kendrew Barracks will grow inside 
Prize, uh, the return of two Royal Anglin from Cyprus. They are considerably bigger than the Princess of Wales Royal Regiment. So, yeah, Kendry Barracks is going to get bigger and bigger. Rutland Radio's best bids on the podcast. Um, this is our, one of our first public things that we've yeah. done together as a unit. Barley Thought Brownies has only been open a few months. And it's important to see the girls in the community and they understand the importance of the whole community, so military. And we're a uniformed organisation, so it's exciting to be a part of the wider Rutland community. But yeah, the girls, they love it. They have their own flag and they can, on their level, participate, which is lovely. Can we expect to see you in the Freedom Parade in Oakham as well in the coming years? I'm sure. I mean, guiding is all over Rutland. There's lots of different units for girls that are age five. We've got one rainbow here today, right through to Ranger Age, which is up to 18. And units from Uppingham, Oakham, Whistendine, all over participate in all memorials and military events that we're invited to. As I say, it's a very important part of our community to recognise. And it's just one small part of guiding, but it's a very important part. And what about Barley Thought Brownies? How did that itself come about? Well, labour of love, really. <laughs> After a glass of wine at a camp, I thought, well, brand new community in Barley Thought. It'd be lovely to get the girls involved. And as you can see, we've got a full unit. 25 girls that have taken their promise February this year and it's been a fantastic success to fill a whole unit very quickly with brand new people in a brand new community with brand new leaders so it's been a very successful venture and the girls have done everything from a UN water badge to girls in engineering badges and it is really something for every girl to get involved in whether you're sporty or crafty or whether you want to do something like this it's a unique thing to get involved Rutland Radio. Hello, how are you both? Hi, really well, thank you. Yeah, I'm fine, Rob, thanks. Excellent. Um, So uh, this week, obviously, is uh, Armed Forces Week. We had an amazing flag-raising event, actually, in our county town in Oakham yesterday, which saw about double the number of people that supported it uh, in previous years. Um, Just give us uh, a sense of how the armed forces is intertwined in this country. For instance, I heard yesterday, um, just in our county alone, which is the smallest county in England, uh, around 9,000 or more are veterans of, of the services. You know, it is something that's, you know, probably bigger than people think, you know, if they're not associated with it. Yeah, um, Rob, the the main thing around the veteran population is they tend to keep themselves to themselves these days. And it, it's interesting that you say that there's the flag raising was a, a larger increase because within the East Midlands, what the statistics have shown is that just under half of the people in East Midlands do not support the military, which is quite shocking, really, when you consider it's a big recruitment area. Uh, and also that um, they admit that thinking the armed forces... It, the stereotypical picture is that they're frontline soldiers and, and fighter pilots, which is not the case because obviously Elizabeth, who's with us today, um, is a is a doctor. Yeah, indeed. I mean, we know one or two military doctors around here. Whereabouts uh, are you based, Liz? So I'm down at Portsmouth at the moment, I'm down with the Navy in the, the biggest Navy base in the UK. So we're very busy. Uh, and what was it that made you want to become part of the military? You know, was was it actually qualifying as a doctor? Is it something you did through your military career? Actually, I joined the Navy in the second year of, of medical school and the Navy sponsored me through through medical school, which was brilliant. And I got to sail and I got a wage whilst being at, at university, which is pretty amazing. And then I um, joined the fleet as a whole and went to sea and saw over 20 different countries I've travelled the world it's been incredible and how much are you at sea because people obviously think of uh, the navy and, and the frigates uh, you know and a lot of uh, travel on the on the waters so it depends what job you're in um, for doctors we do a period of time called general duties where you spend three years either with the royal marines the submarines or the surface fleet and you can um, be at sea a lot of that time i did a couple of six-month deployments during that time and some shorter deployments as well. Uh, Gary, tell us about the work of SAFA because it is a charity that's uh, known to our area. Um, the Touring Battle Proms picnic concerts we're proud to be associated with and uh, their charity now uh, is SAFA at Burley House Stanford on the 20th of July uh, locally. But tell us a little bit about the organisation. 
Yeah, so Safa the Armed Forces Charity is the oldest forces charity out there. We're over 135 years old. And we provide uniquely um, support for serving and ex-members of the military and their families. And the, the families bit is really important for Safa, that we support those families, both in service and those of veterans, uh, enabling meeting their needs and enabling them to live a, live a life outside of the military. Uh, we have over 9,000 volunteers across the country who provide this service for free. Uh, we, we raise money for SAFA because we have to pay for those individuals' expenses. But they're in all the communities and they can be accessed via uh, our website at www.safa.org.uk. Uh, and it's a really important uh, facility that, that we provide within SAFA across the serving community, especially this week with Armed Forces Day coming up and tomorrow being the Reservist Day, because they're really important as well. And we must remember the reserve community because they're working amongst us all. Uh, and then they go off and do their bit for the military in, in their spare time. So it's really important that tomorrow we recognise them. And again, SAFA support all members of the, the Armed Forces community whether they're reserve, national service, serving or, or veterans. So it's really important that the communities and the, the public get out there and just say thank you and show their support for, for those that have served and those that are still serving. Do you think there's an element, actually, of people who aren't involved in the military not wanting to, I suppose, engage in... Um, talk about the military because they don't necessarily understand you know the, the terms and exactly what what the people have been through that they're talking to yeah and I think that shows in the statistics Rob that veterans and people who serve tend to keep themselves to themselves and there's a lot more people now who are serving that live amongst the general population and and people don't know about them and normally when you don't know something it, it tends to scare you or you don't have confidence in it and we do have our own languages I mean even you know the army have a language that we talk and then the navy have something called jack speak so they <laughs> they speak totally different to the rest of us uh, and it's even worse when you're a civilian and you're trying to talk to people in uh, your local community and they don't actually understand what you're trying to say so a message to any veterans or serving people out there when you do speak to civilians remember they might not understand what you're saying so try and educate them a little bit as well and that way we'll get more support because we like nothing better whether ex-military or serving to to tell the stories uh and as they would say in the navy they tell tell a dit um which again is a is another uh local thing for for the navy but it is it's about integrating and interacting with each other and i think the more we do that then the more the public will support what we do. Liz, I obviously want to uh, know how to speak Jack now. Yeah. <laughs> so I could, uh, could teach you a few things. So one of them is that we spin a dit. So we, um, if you tell a story, you tend to spin a dit in the Navy. Mm -hmm. You can get dit locked. So that classic when you're at a, a cocktail party or a dinner party and somebody keeps telling their story to you and you can't get away, That we call that dit lock. Because you're locked in. Um, right, I see, yeah. Yep. You, there's, there's gash, that's your rubbish. So you've got a gash bin and a gash bag. You've got scran, that's your food on board. I could keep going forever. There's a whole book, actually, by, by a doctor, written by a doctor, um, who served in the Falklands, called Rick Jolly. He's written a book called Jack Speak. So uh, that's a good book if you want to know all the terms in the Navy. We some have... for radio and some not for radio. Right, I see what you mean, yes. We have a very small Navy contingent, actually, um, in Rutland. We're, we're mostly an, an, an army community now with RAF just um, over the border, but we were always RAF and now the army actually have, have, have become um, a very, very big part of, of our community here. In fact, um, I think it's going to be the biggest um, base in the East Midlands, actually, uh, up at Kendrew Barracks, the former RAF Cottesmore. But, um, Gary, what would you be your overwhelming uh, message uh, for Armed Forces Week? Is, is it uh, talk and engagement? Yeah, talk, engage, uh, be active, and for the, for the general public, just appreciate and take time to think about those that are serving. We are currently... It's around about 50 operations. I, I believe that the various units and ships are out there and, and army units are on. And also think about their families and just, just take time. And if you get the opportunity, and I know there's a lot going on in Rutland and around the area, if you get an opportunity to go to an event, uh, enjoy it, interact um, and donate as SAFA are the uh, 
charity, uh, the chosen charity of Armed Forces Day this year, uh, donate and allow us to continue to support serving and ex-members of the military. Well, we'll see your charity at Battle Proms at Burley House as well on the 20th of July. And uh, Gary Williams and also Sergeant uh, Lieutenant Commander Liz James, thanks very much for joining us on Rutland Radio today. Thank Thank you, Rob. The weekly Rutland Radio podcast. It's Rutland Radio at breakfast time. I'm Rob Pisani. Starting this weekend is Leicestershire and Rutland's Festival of Archaeology. You could basically say, I guess, uh, that it's following on uh, from the archaeological dig that's uh, been on at Oakham Castle over the last couple of weeks. And they discovered that old brew house. They discovered uh, the um, arrowhead from the 14th century as well. Uh, Ramsey Ross is with us uh, from the Uppingham uh, branch of the, the history societies locally. Now, This is a month-long, Leicestershire and Rutland-wide celebration of our history, I suppose you could say. Yes, it is, and it's a festival that has been sponsored by the Council for British Archaeology for a number of years. And we're fortunate here in Leicestershire and Rutland to have bodies such as the University of Leicester supporting this activity. And what I was hoping to talk about today was about those activities that are being carried on in Rutland and the adjacent areas. And actually, it does seem as though the the history societies in our towns and villages are becoming uh, more and more active and more and more discoveries that you think, well, why did people not know that before now? That's very true. And the obvious one is the Richard III body in the car park. But we kick off the festival on the 29th of June at Bradgate Park in Leicester, where there has been yet another major Roman discovery. And as people will be aware, there's a significant Roman find that took place at Thistleton here in Rutland. So I think our history is emerging. So just running broadly down a few events that we have got coming up in our area. Obviously, the Rutland County Museum is part of this, but groups like the Hallerton Local History Group with the discovery they made just a few years ago now. Yes, and uh, we're fortunate that the Uppingham Group, we are sponsoring the talk on the Hallerton find. The title of the talk is The Hallerton Shrine, and that takes place on Monday the 22nd of July in the Uppingham Methodist Church Hall. At Oakham Castle, the findings of that archaeological dig that's just been completed are going to be revealed on Monday night, the 15th of July. Uh, Borough Hill as well. There are a number of talks at Melton Carnegie, and there is also a guided walk and tour nearby at the Burton Lazars Leper Hospital, which is taking place on the 18th of July, meeting at the Village Hall car park. Now, Stockerston, if I ever drive that way, there's so much woodland. There's also a beautiful church there, and that clearly has quite a history to talk about as well. This is a church that's not generally open, so this is an opportunity with Nick Hill, an expert with English Heritage, to get some insight into St Peter's Church at Stockerston. And that takes place on Saturday the 27th of July at 3pm. And just before that, um, just at the start of the summer holidays as well, there's a Craft Archaeology Day at Rutland County Museum, which is Wednesday the 24th of July. Now, this whole festival has been led by Peter Little, who was the county archaeologist for uh, the two counties for for many years, and I suppose really wanted to make sure that everything continues to be celebrated and, and further discovered as well. Peter has a real passion. It comes across in his talks. And we're fortunate that if people look at the uh, information, it's on the Leicestershire Field Workers Festival of Archaeology website. Peter Peter is contributing to a number of the talks. Could I just add, Rob, that it it isn't just a question of um, talks and there are the walks and tours which we've referred to at Burton Lazars, but there are also family-friendly events and have-a-go events uh, that people may be... uh, of, of. have an interest in. So for example, there is an archaeology pottery finds identification workshop that will take place um, in the middle of the festival. And that's over sort of Hinkley Way at uh, Burbage. So if you have an interest, there is stuff happening very much local to us. But if you don't mind travelling um, to Leicester and beyond as well, you'll discover even more about this whole area. That's, that's correct. And this leaflet that you've you've dropped in uh, with us, where can people pick that up well, from? There, there will be there are copies in in the local museum and in local hotels and library. Um, yes, all over, all over. And, and online as well, as you say. Yes, 
That's at the Leicestershire Fieldworkers Festival of Archaeology. If p people simply put in Festival of Archaeology, they'll get information on what's going on in our area. So please try and discover it if you can. It's from this Saturday uh, for a month, the Leicestershire and Rutland Festival of Archaeology and Ramsey Ross from the Uppingham Group. Uh, thanks for joining us here at Rutland Radio today. Many thanks. Rutland Radio. Can I just have your first name and your school then, please? James Great Caston Primary School. Jensen Empingham Primary School. This is your first time at the flag racing in Oakham. I didn't realise that your schools actually have quite a lot of military children and you, you were two of them. Yes, our schools have quite a few connections with military. My dad is in the RAF and he's currently on deployment in Baghdad. How is that for you, actually not seeing him for a while? He's away for quite a long time, I guess, yeah. is he? It was quite difficult at the start, but I've got used to it by the time, because it's been six months. And what about you? Mine's in the RAF as well, but he's just at work. He's not anyway, he's just at work. What does it mean to be part of this today and actually, you know, all these people who've come out to support people like your dad who work in the military? It's like joining together and celebrating D-Day and the celebration and... Yeah, absolutely, to celebrate what the armed forces do to give us our freedom, I guess. Yeah. Highlights from the past seven days, the Rutland Radio podcast. Nigel Lashbrook, headmaster of Oakham School, for a few more days. And for the last... 10 years the how, last 10 years how yes. would you how would you sum that up really into into the last decade of, of being you know so influential and in leading the team here? well it's been a great privilege to uh, lead such a great school for, for the last decade and I think whenever you look back at your time at a school particularly one like Oakham the memories are very much about the community and what the students have achieved in that time which um Day in, day out has always astounded me at what they, what they are capable of doing. I just wished I had achieved as much when I was at school. <laughs> and actually, as far as um, Oakham School's part, not only in Rutland, but actually um, students here have a, an international presence as well. You know, the people you hear about making huge um, inroads in all sorts of things all, all over the world. They, they do. I mean, we, in many ways across the country, we're, we're, we're a unique school because we're a large school with a 60% um, are boarding students, some local within the UK, uh, 38 different nationalities, I think, this year. Um, and then you've got sort of 40% 40, 40 of the students from the local community as day students. So that sort of mix in a large school is, is quite unique, I think, even across the country, which means that... I, one of the things that I've been very privileged to do for the last 10 years is to meet older Camians, uh, the alumni of the school, all over the world. Um, all doing different things, all achieving great things. Some entrepreneurs, uh, sportsmen, musicians, um, thespians, people who have been very successful in business, people running charities. All sorts of different areas of life uh, Camians are, are involved in, which to me is a great testament to the school um, enabling students to develop their own pathways, uh, their, own, their own journeys through the school, which then take them in all sorts of different directions when they leave. And what was it that actually made you want to come here when you saw the job or heard about the job? Well, I was running a, a smaller school, another very, very good school, but a smaller school in the West Country, and when the job at Oakham became available, it was probably one of the two or three schools that would have taken me away from the school I was at. Uh, I knew of Oakham's reputation as a school that provided a genuinely all-round education. I was also very interested in the International Baccalaureate, which the school runs alongside A-levels in the upper school in the sixth form. And to me, it was too good an opportunity um, not to have a go at. And, uh, you know, to cut a long story short, here I am ten years on and about to leave. Uh, and do you have any words for your successor? Um... Embrace everything that Oakham has to offer. Uh, enjoy and revel in what the students achieve. And uh, to him and his family, very much enjoy being part of the community because it is a very special place and we shall certainly miss it. Nigel Lashbrook, thank you very much for joining us on Rutland Radio for the final time. Thank you very much, thank you. Rutland Radio. Well, firstly, Dave Casewell, um, congratulations on uh, becoming Mayor of Uppingham yet again. Thank you very much. It's a great honour. I'm really uh, looking forward to my year in office. 
And as part of that, actually, you were missing from the Uppingham Feast because you were one of Uppingham's twin towns with a street named after the town? Yes, indeed. First, I was very sorry to miss the feast. It's the first feast I've missed in a long, long time. And I really must add my congratulations to everyone who helped make that feast a success. Such a lot of hard work went into it. I understand they had a bit of the weather that we had at Codebeck as well. But uh, nonetheless, it, it was a great day. To go to Codebeck, as, as you kindly asked as well, yes, I was part of the, uh, the twinning um, group that went to Codebeck. About 40 of us, I think, uh, went to Codebeck. And part of the celebrations was to name a new street in Codebeck. They're redeveloping part of the old industrial part of it. Uh, uh, Ruda Uppingham, or Uppingham, as they say in, in Codebeck. Um, and it didn't rain, it was biblical rain whilst it was being done. And so the actual cutting of the tape was a, a pretty hurried affair under umbrellas. Uh, and then we all scuttled into the communal garages of these uh, little uh, houses that are on Ruda Uppingham. And uh, uh, we, we had a glass of a fizz and um, made speeches. I, uh, in my normal Bon Dieu France, uh, made my speech and everyone roared when I made the wrong word and I think I called the uh, Mary instead of Marie or something like that but anyway it, was, it all went well on eh? Tonk Cordial and we now have a street called Rue de Uppingham unfortunately they did indicate that, up, that Uppingham was in Leicestershire on the sign right but, we can uh, always get that remade can't uh, we they, they, they are and much much embarrassment all round and uh, uh, they've promised that it will be redone in fact I think we may very well have a photograph of the new sign already but it was a bit of a giggle really am I right in thinking actually in Uppingham somewhere there is called a back close there is indeed, and it was the, the, the fact that they found out there was a Codebeck close, which caused them to have a, a rude upping. And although, although embarrassingly, uh, uh, we didn't ask them to open Codebeck close, it was simply part of uh, the, the Lime Tree Avenue development. But, however, uh, yes, so it's even Stephen now. We're doing fine. Uh, we're speaking here at the uh, Canberra um, Beer Festival here at the museum, and um, this great memorial to one of the great Morris dancing brewers of the area too. Yeah, uh, our cider bar here is called Woodster's Bar, uh, named after our uh, great colleague who's pastor of the brewery in the sky, John Wood, uh, who died about 18 months ago now. And he was, he knew everything there was to know about cider. Well, in fact, everything to know was about beer because he was a champion beer uh, brewer of Great Britain in 2001. So um, we decided to name the bar after him and I suspect he's, he's in that great bar in the sky um, in just about to th- contemplate a nice dry cider at about 6.5% now. Absolutely and JHB as, as people hopefully know Geoffrey Hudson Bitter is something that was created by him uh, Oakham Ales um, and then of course it moved over to Peterborough but it's, its roots will always be here in the county. Oh yes indeed, in fact um, uh, John died last year just before our beer festival last year and the brewers at Oakham Ales we are so much in debt to John because of Geoffrey Hudson Bitter uh, brewed a special beer on his account and we had that at uh, last year's beer festival as well um, there's nothing John didn't know about beer it's just pity really he was a brilliant brewer but maybe not the best of business people as is often the case rutland radio's best bids on the podcast thank you si well i'm standing in the sunshine here at the rutland county museum here with john wall who's the chairman of uh, rutland camera and organizer of this beer festival how many years yet now do you think this is our eighth festival we had a gap of one year when the uh, library was being refurbished but this is like our spiritual home um, down here at the museum because uh, as, you, as you can see, it's just an ideal setting. Isn't it just? And I'll tell you what, actually, I've never seen Oakham High Street quite so busy with, I don't want to be stereotypical here, but middle-aged men with backpacks on. Um, there was a huge horde of people coming towards Rutland County Museum over the last few minutes for the opening. Well, yeah, we're delighted. We normally start off slow, um, but I think the weather's brought uh, people out. Uh, Thursday is a, a good day because the beer is absolutely top condition. We've got it properly chilled this year, so it'll keep its condition until Sunday. Um, yeah, we're delighted to have them. We've got t- uh, people coming from uh, Manchester, Rugby Derby, uh, all over the country. And that we will get a few Scots people down as well, and maybe some continental visitors. The furthest people who ever travelled to this was from New Zealand. Um, 
I like to think they came just for the beer festival, but they think they did other things as well. But we've got 40 beers, uh, we have 10 ciders and perries, and we have six English wines, all, and the wines are all produced within 20 miles of, uh, of Oakham. And is that what it's all about, really? It's about talking about and showing what our area produces? Yeah, we, we, don't, we have a special uh, bar for the three breweries uh, in Rutland, but the beers have come from, again, all over the country. Part of the campaigns uh, has achieved his protective real ale because there are now thousands of small breweries. Um, the problem we have, and particularly in rural areas, is the uh, trying to keep them open. And there's a lot of work going on to try and get uh, pub companies to be a bit more realistic about rents, particularly for rural pubs, because it really is the hub of the community. So how much is it for people to get in? It's uh, free for camera members, uh, or if you want to join camera when you're, you're here, uh, that's free for you, and you get uh, two free pints. But uh, apart from that, it's just a pound. We're open from 11 in the morning, uh, today, well, today, Friday, and Saturday, and then 12 noon till 4 on Sunday. And uh, we have a ceremony happening in just a few minutes' time as one of the vicars from the area is blessing your beer. Yes, well, uh, we're going to thank him for having a word with his boss for providing such great weather. He's actually sponsoring one of the beers, uh, which is, aptly comes from St Peter's Brewery. Um, I've, uh, I haven't met him yet, so I don't know, and hopefully I'll recognise him, but uh, he will come and bless the beers about 11.30. So, vicar of St Peter's from somewhere locally? Uh, the, the, the church in Oakham, I'm not that good. You know, Stephen Griffiths. That's the one. That'll be him. That'll be him. Here very soon. Yes. John, thanks very much My for joining pleasure. us. Rutland Radio. Thank you, Sire. I'm here with Elaine Rutham of HUK based in Uppingham, uh, but also uh, Elaine leads the cancer support groups collectively uh, locally. Here at Oakham Castle up until two o'clock this afternoon, Your Health Matters is a free event for people, I guess, Elaine, to, to find out not only if they need those services that you offer, but also just to make sure that everything's okay for them as well. Yeah, definitely. The idea of getting the organisations together was really so that often people, certainly with cancer and any long-term condition, need different services at different times, and that can include financial help, we've got the complementary therapy, the groups. Some people like to come to groups, others like the one-to-one service that the Macmillan Project run. But it's also saying, actually, come and have a look. There's lots of services that you can access in Rutland, and it's all about looking after yourself, the physical side of things, and exercise, eating well, so that if you're going through, certainly the cancer journey, that you can access these services, and it makes life a lot better, a lot easier. I I guess we all have to look after ourselves at whatever stage of life we're at, and you've got BMI checks over there. Yeah, definitely, because it's also for people that just want a bit of advice or they're a bit concerned about things, so, so yeah. Something for everybody. It's open at Oakham Castle through until two this afternoon. Your health matters. Make sure it does. If you are free, do pop down if you can. The weekly Rutland Radio podcast. It's Rutland Radio at breakfast time. I'm Rob Pisani and uh, talking about this weekend's Stamford's last night of the proms with the Stamford Singers and uh, leading the singers is Paul White. Now, um, tell us about um, the singers. Uh, how often uh, you perform, Paul? Because I've seen you once or twice actually around the area and obviously in the Stamford area. Who are Stamford singers? Yes, we, we've been going now for some 11 years. We started in 2007. Not officially as a choir then. We were just a group of friends who were asked to sing a service in the church in Beldham, of all places, and we've stuck together ever since. What we mainly do is visit churches and cathedrals two or three times a year to sing the services there while the resident choir is away. That's our main activity. The other one is to perform the odd concert mainly locally, in aid of local charities. And since 2012, I think, we've adopted the Evergreen Care Trust as our own charity. But we sing concerts for other charities and to support church funds very often as well. And that's what's happening actually this weekend at Barnhill. Not only the Evergreen Care Trust, but also some other Rotary Club of Stamford Burley charities, Barnhill Outreach, Cricket with Learning Difficulties and General Rotary Charities. So we're kind of used to the proms programme, I suppose, but maybe not necessarily used to the way that you're going to perform it as more of a a choral work. Yes, we can't afford in Stamford to get hold of the BBC Symphony Orchestra and a large chorus and um, eminent soloists. The expense would be too much. And, of course, the Barnhill Methodist Church 
lovely as it is to sing it, isn't the Royal Albert Hall. But no, what we can do is try and get the atmosphere of the last night of the proms, and we're hoping that we'll get a nice large audience which will wave flags and have a few minutes being proud about their country and singing patriotic songs. Yeah, I've guessed particularly on the real proms favourites, the Royal Britannia kind of... Um, oh, Royal Britannia, land yeah. of hope and glory. Oh, yes, you'd like, you'd like the audience also to join in, would you? Oh, they'll be joining in. I should be conducting them and making sure they do. And, and actually, it, you know, there's, there's something actually very relaxed about uh, proms concerts where the audience do feel part of it. Uh, yes, that's what we're hoping. Um, so uh, even though... Uh, as I say, we're not the Albert Hall. We're hoping that, that they'll come away with um, the feeling that they've had a really good time. So that's £12 a ticket, Stanford Arts Centre, and benefiting all those four charities. And um, just looking at the, the programme here, there's, there's plenty that people will be able to get involved with. Uh, yes, uh, it, is the, it is the Stanford Singers, uh, an all an all-call concert. We have two guest soloists, Dawn Herbert, who uh, now lives in Stanford and is a singing teacher, and Rob Gilden, who knows the area well, um, soprano and baritone soloists uh, helping us and taking part as well. And instead of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, we have our uh, our own organist, accompanist, David Lovell Brown. Um, He will have to be, uh, he'll have to do that on the organ. He, he works hard as well locally, isn't he? Works isn't he works very he's, hard indeed. Almost every every church I think he's played in at some point during every single year that we've ever been here. Yes, you could call him Mr Organ Man of the region, I think. Yes, indeed. So tickets from Stanford Arts Centre, and um, they're still available now if people would like to actually get involved with this. On, Stanford on Arts Centre is the best place to go, yes. Excellent, Paul. Thank you very much for joining us on Rutland Radio. Have a wonderful night, and I hope you raise lots of money for the four charities as well. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Rutland Radio. My name's Caroline Barnes, and I'm a friend of Lauren's and a friend of Sarah's, more new friend of Sarah's. And obviously I've been massively interested in what Lauren's been doing to help Sarah and give her some great memories going forwards. And actually what Lauren has done and put together and the fundraising is incredible in such a short time. Yeah, it's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, she decided to do these slogan T-shirts to show support for Sarah. Her initial target was to raise £1,000, and that was raised in two hours. She raised 2000 in less than 24 hours, and the total is now over 4600 online donations and over £200 cash donations. She's now wanting to do a sponsored chess wax a bake sale, raffle, pamper party, and it's very much hoping to do a Prosecco and gym festival and more. The money raised for different charities, Sarah's Bucket List Fund, Cancer Research and Hope Gates Cancer. It's absolutely fantastic what she's doing and quite humbling, I think, for all of us to have seen what she's done for her friend and really inspiring. And I can well understand that actually Lauren talking about this is just too personal to, to do on the radio so so thank you very much for, for conveying that and and as you say it's it is something um, that it's made such a difference in such a short time I believe Sarah this weekend is actually going off to Ragdale which is on her bucket list oh, the first of those things uh, that actually yeah. um, is there to, to give her the full life however long her, her life is from now I yeah, suppose absolutely right and um, give her memories with her family um, and all her close friends and Yeah, it's fantastic, really. Just unbelievable. Well, that's it for this week's Rutland Radio podcast. If you have any comments, you can email us via the website, rutlandradio.co.uk, and we'll have a new version on our website from Monday. This is a download from Rutland Radio. For more information, go to rutlandradio.co.uk.